Yes. We are so excited about you being involved in this. We have an exciting Bible study tonight. You may notice it's something a little bit different. I am not Pastor Duncan. <laughs> Amen. I am not Pastor Duncan. I'm Pastor Cable Brown, Assistant Pastor here at Shallow Baptist Church, and we're excited about what we're about to talk about tonight. Yes. And I have some some of my family here tonight. Uh, my twin is here tonight. My daughter's here tonight. <laughs> Amen. And we're, we're, we're going to have a good time. Yes, I, would, I would like for you to introduce yourselves so that everybody know who you are. These are a couple of my favorite, most favorite people in the world. Uh, Pastor Gary Mack, associate pastor here at Shallow Baptist Church. Minister Nikki Lively, um, here and happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. We're ready to cut up tonight. We're going to have a good time before camera. And just let you know, we love you guys. We really appreciate you being here. You've been so faithful to us in so many ways to our Bible study and as well as our uh, early morning services. And you've also been watching us on YouTube and our secret place. So we just appreciate you. You have been a, a, a tremendous asset to help us to go on, really. Because if not for you, why would we be doing what we do? So uh, tonight, we're going to discuss some things that I hope will help you tonight. Tonight, we're going to be discussing primarily two areas. We're going to talk about the Christian home, and we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. Amen. We're in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 22, but before we get there, we're going to pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. We need to make sure that the Spirit of God is motivating us and moving us towards a higher place tonight. So if you would, if you would, grab your Bibles, grab your devices, make sure you have your word ready to go, because this is Word Up Wednesday, we're ready to go and get into our scripture tonight. Amen. Amen. So let's bow. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity to just uh, be here. And we ask that your spirit be here. Yes, God. That you move us, guide us, Lord, so that we might be able to um, hear your word. And Lord, there's somebody that's going to need to hear this word. They're going to need to know this word. They're going to need to be able to, gra to, gra to gravitate to this word. They need the word to be able to survive. Because Lord, many times there have been times when we didn't know what to do, but it's your word that kept us. It's your word that blessed us. Yes, it's your word that directed us. So Lord, Lord, we ask you right now, just so Holy Spirit, you said you would give us what we need to say at the time we need to say it. You are the teacher, and we are just recipients of you about what you're about to do. So we humble ourselves for you, and just ask right now that you just move by your power through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight is a very important study because um, if you haven't noticed, the family is under attack. Yes, sir. The family is under attack. Uh, we have just as many divorces in the church as it is out in the world. And it shouldn't be like that. Many times there are folk at odds with one another in the home and wonder why they can't seem to be on the same page. Well, tonight we want to look at some things and we want to ask some questions of God and ask how can we become a Christian home that glorifies God? Because essentially that's what we want to do. We want to glorify God. So we're going to look at three areas. We're going to look at the husband and the wife relationship. Then we're going to look at the children. you got to bring these kids yes, in because sir. these kids can yes, well, help us with these kids. <laughs> Amen. And there's another area that God wants to look at, for us to look at, is the area of our employment. Amen. So these three areas, they're going to go right to spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. So um, I'm going to ask that uh, Pastor Mac, you read verse uh, Ephesians chapter 22, or chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, if you would. Verse 22, wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Wow. wow. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. First of all, there's a word in there that I think some people have a problem with. I don't know about you, but uh, talk to me. It, 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 what, 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 what are we looking at here when the Lord says to the wives to submit themselves to their husbands? Um, I, I, I just want to say before I dive into this, <laughs> is that um, we say every week when we hear on stage how powerful the book of Ephesians is. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's so powerful because uh, Paul made a clear distinction that he was talking to believers. And 
it's, it's ironic that we have to get these type of instructions, even though we've been brought up to church and we know the Lord, mm -hmm. constantly remind us how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. And since marriage is one of the hardest hit areas that enemy tried to separate husband and wife, it's very important that we really get a clear understanding of this. Not in the flesh, but in a spiritual view of what he's talking about when he's saying, why well, submit, mm -hmm. come on underneath, or or line yourself up with. Amen. But also, make clear, he has to be somebody who's following Christ. Mm -hmm. It has to be a good reason for her to want to submit to something. She has to see some kind of God in this man or, or the spouse Amen. to be able to follow and sub submit, submit to some type of direction. And, and submission, well, Nikki, before we go, to, what do you think about that word submit? I, I feel like, you know, when we see as women the word submit, it's almost like, whoa, mm -hmm. you, you want me to bow down? You want me to, to follow the rules? You want me? How many years as a woman have I fought yeah. uh, to be uh, an individual uh, out uh, of the yeah. now God, you telling me to do this? Yeah. Um, you know, but I feel like Paul has been talking about submission through the whole book oh, of yeah. Ephesians. Yeah. Yeah. So he started off in the first book and saying, I submit to God even as a prisoner to Christ. So if he can submit as a prisoner, he taught us how to submit as wives to our husbands. Wow, Amen. That's, you know, when you look at it from a from the biblical perspective, and you look at as Nikki just brought up, and as Pastor Mac has already mentioned, when it comes down to submission, that means you bring yourself up under authority. Mm -hmm. Up under authority. But it's, it's not just saying I'm bringing myself up under your authority, because let's be honest. Some of us have some, I'm about to say something. Right? Say 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 so. We have some say folk in our home who don't know how to submit to the authority of God. So I have a question. What happens when you have a, when you have a spouse or a husband who does not want to submit to God's authority, but yet God's telling you to submit to the man? How are you supposed to respond to that? I, I believe we have to respond to it like we respond to every other instruction God has given us. By faith. You can't see it at first. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep on pressing. Keep on doing what's right. Keep Stay on your knees. Mm -hmm. You have to pray. Amen. Amen. You better make sure you're in tune with what God is saying mm -hmm. through his word. Mm -hmm. But you, to me, you have to persevere. Amen. It's something that we know sometimes will not change overnight. But by being consistent and trusting God in time, in time, God will begin to make those changes. In our life. I, I also think, and just to piggyback off of that, you know, it, it, it is about not giving up hope. Mm -hmm. And God gave us hope in other scriptures. Sanctified wife Amen. will sanctify her. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. You know, and I know many of women who have encouraged me, you know, and have told me, yeah, listen, I prayed for him. Mm -hmm. And God turned his life around. So I feel like uh, I know, yes, I am not married. <laughs> but I can honestly say that I have seen other marriages and where God has worked miraculously in them. Because of the woman got on her knees and prayed, because she anointed her husband's pillow at night before he went to sleep, because she continued to be faithful in God. God is faithful to us, yes, and there's is. nothing that's impossible with him. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you, you guys brought up something about the spiritual aspect of how a wife is supposed to respond when she has a husband who doesn't have to know how to act. Because sometimes, let's be real, ladies, sometimes you want the man to respond not to God, but to you. Uh, and you want to make him into your image rather than the image of God. Now listen to me. Sometimes God will have you with someone who may rub you wrong. Because he's trying to do something in you as well as you do something in him. Oh, right. Now, but, now this, 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 is what, this is what happens. We have to, oftentimes we think you can browbeat a man into changing. You want to you get him even though you knew you got him. He was already an issue before you got him. Amen. <laughs> he had stuff going on before you got him. You knew he was a he was a conniver, he was a thief, he was this, that, and third. But she said, Well, I love him, and so you're gonna bring him in, and you're gonna change him. But the reality is, God says you cannot coerce or put a man in a position where you're gonna change him based on what you want. Wow. The Bible says over in First Peter chapter 3 that you don't win you don't you don't push a man into change, you're winning into change. Yeah. It's, this is what it says. Matter of fact, if we can. I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, and I need to look at that real quick. And it says, likewise, wives, be subject to your husbands. 
That's like you talked about here in Ephesians. To your own husbands. Notice first of all, he said your own husbands. There's times when, when wives will be subject to the pastors, but not subject to the husbands. Think about that now. You, in your home, the man needs to feel like he's the man of the house. We won't talk about the brothers and how you need to treat y'all because it's in this scripture, okay? But um, it says, uh, subject yourself to your own husband so that even if some do not obey the word, listen to that, if they don't obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. In other words, it's not by the verbiage, not by how much word, how many words you use. Because sometimes a man shuts down. You don't want to hear it no more when you start talking too much about his character. But he said, but the Lord is saying, if you, by your quiet conduct, when you and, and, and the respect that you have for him and, the pure, and your pure conduct, do not let it be from your adorning or the external appearance. I'm not saying don't get yourself dressed up. I'm not saying you don't have yourself looking good. You know how to be fly. You know how to be fly. Come on. You know how to do, you know how to do this thing. You knew what it took to get him because that's why he drew his, you drew his eye towards you by the things you, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Now, so so that is not, that's not, he's not saying you don't do that, but don't let that be the only thing. It's your spirit and the way you control yourself and the way you conduct yourself that's going to help this man to become what God wants him to be. Because remember, he called you to be the help me. That means you're completing him. Without you, without you as his spouse, he's not he's incomplete. Amen. Amen, somebody. So, Sister Nikki, you have something you want to say? I think it just takes me back to Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. And being the virtuous woman. That's right. And how she carries herself, how she carries her husband. Household, she gets up early in the morning to pray to take care of everyone else first, and it is, it's about your character. Right. You know, God saw what was inside of you to place you with that man, mm -hmm. so therefore, that man is as long as he's under Christ, he's going to see what God sees in you. That's right. That's right. If he's coming to church, understand something. Also, remember the potential the potential that he has, the potential that what God can do through your husband. If you're praying, as, as Sister Nikki said, if you're on your knees, as Pastor, as Pastor Max already mentioned, if you anoint his pillow at night, you can, you can really make a difference by not even saying a word. Let God get him. I know what I'm talking about. I was on those knuckleheads, okay? I'm still, I'm still here. Time, time, right? I have a praying wife. She knows sometimes she look at me and they say, Lord Jesus. All right? So we're going to move on. Go ahead, brother. I, I just want to say that submission yourself to your own husband. Mm -hmm. That is a preparation. Mm -hmm. Preparing yourself for it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a struggle and a battle through the change in you. Mm -hmm. It's like we're preparing ourselves. You know, we are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. And early in this chapter is telling how we have to take off those layers of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. We're making preparation for the for the groom. Mm -hmm. And we're preparing for the relationship we have with our Savior. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to say real quick, that you are not inferior to any man. Come on, man. Come on, Pastor. You are not, because God calls you to submit, does not make you inferior. You're not less than. All right? The Bible calls the woman the weaker vessel. That's because of physical. But you could be a spiritual dynamo. Amen. Fact, Amen. You could be a prayer warrior on your home, in your own home. But Amen. through your prayer life, you can turn some things around. But, but don't ever think that you're inferior because God asked you to submit. Matter of fact, what he's talking about is an order. It's the order of things in the home. Without order in the home, there's chaos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he made man the head, but the head does not mean you are a dictator. Amen. All right, brother? Amen. You don't mean you tell Amen. your wife, you do this, you go fix my food, woman, get it. Do no, you don't do that. That's because now you're not submitted to Christ. Okay. All right? God gives us a representation here as to how a man is supposed to respond to his wife. Uh, we also have just appeared from, come all the way from California. <laughs> Come out of hey. hey, say hey, everybody. Hey, hey. hey. everybody say hey. You, you, you possibly keep a Douglas in the house, everybody. Hey. 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 Amen. She flew all the way here from California. <laughs> We're glad that she's here. Amen. Hey. Amen. So let's move on. Uh, it talks about husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved my, the church my, my, my. and gave himself up for it. So we talked about the wife and what's her response to a husband, but how is the man supposed to respond to his wife? How is he supposed to treat his wife? Go ahead. Anyway. I, when I, I was going to say, when I hear this verse, 
and I and I it gives me hope because it's almost as if Christ protects the church. Okay. Um, he provides for the church and he sacrifices for the church. So for me, God willing, when he sends me my Boaz, <laughs> I feel like I will be protected by Christ, provided for, and not only loved and cherished, but I also, there might be some sacrifices that need to be made that were compromise. Because it takes a lot to have to sacrifice for someone else. Amen. Amen. When, when I listen to this passage, um, it's funny, you know, play it in your head. Um, I think about who was saying it. And Paul, never been married, was like, if I gotta figure out how can I explain the kind of love and commitment and death and, and sacrifice and compromise and power, oh, I'll say, <laughs> what God gave him, you gotta love her like Christ loves the church. That's right. That's right. It's awesome because you see. Wow, you know, okay, we ready. All right? Okay, we ready now. We all we ready now, okay? When we talk about this, amen, when we talk about this, a husband loves your wife as Christ loved the church, you got to think about what Christ did for the church. Now, what he's really doing is giving us an image of the church, Christ and the church, through the relationship of a husband and wife. You know what I'm saying? So your, your marriage is deeper than just you and him in the house sharing the same name, sharing the same bed, and sharing the bills. It's your representation of Christ here on earth and how the church should respond to Christ. As the church, we should submit to Christ. As Christ being the head, he protects, he guides, he, and he died for the church. Yes. He's telling the husband, love Christ as he loved, loved the, your wife as Christ loved the church. What did he do for the church? He died for the church. Yeah. Come on now. Uh, now. Come on now. Come yeah, on now. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Somebody yeah, talk to you. Yeah, talk yeah. Talk always on, on his mind. Talk, you know, like, I need you to be, and this is real talk. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep the romance, if you want to keep the, the if you want to stay married, mm -hmm. right? And happily married. Mm -hmm. um, I, it makes me think about how many Christians aren't happily Christians. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it is. So where do you find your love, peace, and happiness? It makes us rethink what we call love, what we call commitment, what we call sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's okay, it's okay, we all guilty and then we're right. But take some time to reflect because this is a magnitude. And I just want to throw one more scripture. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys covered this one already. You know, we were talking, there's another passage and it talks about how um, wives should submit to their own husbands, right. but most people omit the verse right before it that says, submit yourselves one to another. To another. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. It stops right there. Uh -huh. you, my husband's supposed to treat me right. I'm supposed to treat him right. That's right. That's right. And we're supposed to submit ourselves in the fear of Christ, in the fear of the Lord. If you reverence God, if you reverence Christ, do you know how to treat your spouse right? You, now listen, we we can work each other's nerves. Come on now, let's get real. Can't nobody work your nerve like your spouse. Amen. But when you have a relationship with Christ, you learn how to bring that, bring it back. Ask for forgiveness and come back together because you know if you don't, you leave a room for the devil to get involved in your relationship. Amen. So, 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 go ahead, Pastor. Paul, Paul clearly stated how much the church needed help. Mm -hmm. They needed some apostles. They needed some. Uh, they needed some evangelists. Right. They needed some pastor teachers mm -hmm. for the equipping of the saints. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at the Christ's love for us. Not only did he die and loved us, mm -hmm. but look at what he put up with still. Yeah, come on. Long suffering. He's, oh, he's yeah. still dealing with Jesus. our, our, our hang-ups, our hang-ups, everything that we deal with, we wrestle with our fears, our phobias. God, Christ is still dealing with them and loving us in spite of Amen. that God be loved. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what you do, Amen. no matter what you've done, I still, I still, I still, I still love. I still love. That's a marriage. That's a marriage. That's a marriage. And when we make that vow until death, mm -hmm. yeah. this is the, the vow that Christ made to us. Mm -hmm. He said, not just to death, Amen. because I did die. <laughs> when I got up, I, I got to die right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. See, what, you. We want, what we're trying to convey to you, that your marriage is more important than you think. Yes. And the, the witness that is, is not just uh, two coming together. But as Christians in a Christian home, yeah. there's value wow. to your relationship 
that counts in heaven. Because now you're saying, as, I, as Jesus was to the church, I'm going to be to my wife. As the church is supposed to be to Christ, I'm going to be to my husband. See, the church is supposed to submit to the, to the headship of Christ. Yes. As God is saying, the wife should submit to the headship of, 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 of his, her husband. But understand something. Jesus submitted to the headship of the Father. Mm -hmm. If you write down Philippians chapter 2, it says that he, went, he humbled himself even to the point of death. So if Jesus can submit himself, who are we not to? Uh, who are we not to? Uh, but remember the order. I, as a husband, I must submit myself to the headship of Christ. My wife must submit herself to the headship, my headship, but she's also doing so, in doing so, she's submitting to Christ herself. Absolutely. Because yes, yes. it's an order of things. It's an order. So that we can, watch this, we can control the chaos that can come into our home. Amen? It will come. It will, it will come. Yeah. Let's look at just a few more verses here, and then we're going to talk about these kids real quick. <laughs> Amen? We've got to talk about these kids, all right? <laughs> Look that where it says, even so our husbands also to love their own wives as their own bodies. Mm. He that loved his own wife loved himself. For no man, no man hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as Christ also the church, because we are members of his body. Now look at this. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a mystery. Yes. A great mystery, but I speak in regard of Christ in the church. Okay. And look how I end this. However, let each one of you love each other, each one his own wife, even as himself, and let the wife see that she fear or rather respect her husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to jump on that? I want to encourage somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm laughing mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I just want to encourage somebody. Mm -hmm. Because when I first got married, I really wrestled. I was mad at Paul, like, why are you going to say that? Why? I mean, that's how I looked at that. Well, I got strong with it. And I remember as a deaconess, um, someone gave me a book, and it was this one passage, and it just, it, it, it made it click. It said, what, whatever we do is as unto the Lord. It is. You said, Pastor, already, that helped me out. And then the other part was this, husbands. If you take care of your wife, if you carry out your responsibilities, if you man up, if if you do what you said you was gonna do and be about your business, your wife won't have problems submitting to you. Because it's a respect thing. It's a respect thing and it's a love thing. But it's I will say it's just easier when you do what you need to do. Likewise, wives, when it gets hard, pray for your husband. Because he does have the responsibility. And men. Y'all handle problems differently Absolutely. than we do. Absolutely. We gonna wear it, all of it, oh. all of it. Everybody's gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Men, y'all deal with it differently, mm -hmm. and, and that's part of why God put the burden or responsibility, like you said, protect us. Sure. But you're equipped, you're made up Amen. like that, and we're, hey, we need you to sure. <laughs> take care of us. Amen. Support. Amen. And, and, and that's 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 an awesome that's an awesome observation right there because we as men and we are different. And we have to respect those differences. Yes. Many times we want to want the person to be like what we expect them to be. We want them to respond the way we want That's them right. to respond. But I can't be all emotional when it's a situation I have to think through. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I have to process. And sometimes my wife may ask me a question at the time. I'm not ready for the end. I'm not ready because I need to think. You already been thinking about this. You've been looking at it. You've been dealing with it. You've been all over your head with it. It's like this thing, you wake up with it. You go to bed with it. And I'm like, look, I'm just trying to make it through the day right now. And you hit me with this question. I'm like, I, I, I heard you. Now let me think. I need an answer. I don't, I don't have an answer right now. Okay? That's just how we function. Pastor. I just like to piggyback off what Sister Bikini said. Um, when me and my wife counsel, I don't counsel a couple unless my wife can be there with me. Amen. Because there's a woman perspective there. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm a, I know I'm a pastor, but also I know I'm connected to my wife. Mm -hmm. There's a oneness there that I know and I recognize. Mm -hmm. And she would mention, and I hope she's watching. You're watching that. She would say something to the couple that would always blow my mind. Mm -hmm. And she would say this to every couple that we counsel. She would say the same words you just said. If a husband is doing what he's supposed to do, it's very easy for a woman to respect a husband like I respect. And she pointed at me. 
And immediately I wanted to think about all the wrong stuff I did. Mm -hmm. But when you connected to Christ and talking to somebody out there, when you connected to Christ and there's evidence, this ought to be a demonstration when a woman or looking at the body of Christ looks at that husband, at that figure, it ought to be something in him. That somewhere it reflects Christ. I don't want to go no further, kind of before. It just ought to be something that they can say that uh, he might not be perfect. But you know what? I'm going to submit to that because I see this quality, this character, this, this leadership, this, this covering in this. In this Amen. Yeah. That's 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 that real good because what 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 you what you're saying is that I see the potential in him. Yes. 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 And because I see the potential, one word I'd like to give you for 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 a marriage, if you're gonna have a marriage that's gonna be strong and successful, is that you need to be committed. Wow. A commitment. It does not mean that everything's gonna be perfect, does not mean that you're always gonna see eye to eye. But commitment says I'm staying in this. For the long run, yes, I'm going to fight for this. Yes, so being, amen, is work, but I'm committed to the work. Amen? Yes. I, I just want to speak to my single ladies out there. Just for oh, a wait, talk to them. I, I, I just want to say, yes, you may see the potential in a man, but please, please, mm -hmm. please, and I preface this, go before the throne of God go. to see if God sees the potential in a man. Because when you follow after a man, whose heart isn't after Christ, and I'm, and I'm talking from a place of experience, you'll find yourself all messed up in the game and wonder how you got there. So before you can even get to the married part of it, ladies, you're not a wife until you are committed and married. Wow, 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 so wow. truly, your husband is Christ. Amen. Wow. Yeah. wow. First. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> and then I'm going to fool with that. I'm going to be there. I'm just going to drop the mic moment. Yeah, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Amen. We're going to leave that right there. All right? Let's look at chapter 6 real quick. We're going to look at verses 1 to 9. We're for time's sake because we need to talk about these kids real quick. Amen. <laughs> now, notice this is, a, this is a different wording. Now, this whole passage description, the next few verses, really talk about submission in some shape or form. But he tells the wife to submit, meaning bring yourself up under one's authority. But look what he says to the children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Let's stop right there. The story is somebody talking about these kids. What, what about these kids? All right. Might be looking over here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I, I'm good. I was gonna say, uh, you know, when I think about this passage of the scripture, I always get to mind when you know you got in trouble, and, and mom will pull you to the side, or dad will pull you to the side, and say, "This is gonna hurt you. This is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you." And I remember a lot of times, like again. <laughs> God already tells children to honor. Amen. Mm -hmm. Honor. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if, if you know your parents wrong or, or you may think they're wrong because God will cause that parent to come back to you right. and apologize. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that word honor is right there that it may go well with you and you may enjoy a long life. Right. There's something about honoring your parents even when you get older. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, they can get on your last nerve, mm -hmm. but they're still your parents, and God will reward you faithfully for that. Amen. Amen. Is this um, it's funny because my parents used this scripture on me growing up, <laughs> and I really used it on my kids growing up because I would say God said that's the first mm -hmm. promise with a blessing or a curse. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and shorten your life. Let me say that. Mom is carrying on. Like, God knows how it seems. But. Um, this passage is so full. Um, before it says honor, it says obey. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And when you obey your parents, it is as unto the Lord. 
And I want to encourage you because some of us may have some parents that are not in Christ. They might not have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And maybe you have. And it gets difficult sometimes when they're kind of, it doesn't sound like what the Bible's telling you to do their advice or their conversation or their behavior. Nevertheless, there is a blessing in your obedience of respecting them in that position God put them in as your mother and or your father. And in the Lord, pray that they become in the Lord like you are. Um, yeah, because I already said, that, you know, there's, there's an upside. Out of the Ten Commandments, hey, this one up one there. Honor yeah. uh, your mother and your father. There was a reason as to when he talked about it, engaging and, and having roles in your life, that that role is that important. And you don't want to walk away with your life shortened because you were disrespectful or disobedient. Mm -hmm. God said it first in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the commandments, he said it. Also, Paul reiterated in the book of Ephesians, the whole book, several times it's been known as the mystery, meaning that the world, I, I know I've been saying this, but I, you have to get this, that the world, somebody separated from Christ, can't understand the mystery. Yeah. So God felt it was very important to be repeated again how important it is for children to obey their parents. And the reason why we need to make sure that we obey our parents is because there's a consequence that comes along with it. Amen. That, that consequence can be devastating. It can shorten your time. Mm -hmm. it, can, it, can, it can hinder your, your walk and your effectiveness with other people. And obey, obedience. Mm -hmm. Obedience to Christ. Why? Because there's a blessing that comes along mm -hmm. with your obedience. Amen. Mm -hmm. He tells the children to obey. I mean, do like I tell you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about kids that live in your home. There's, there's, there's something going on. There's something crazy going on in our days. When I was growing up, my dad spoke. That was God. You understand what I'm saying? My dad spoke, and if he started biting inside his mouth, I got that tendency now. That means somebody about to get a whoop. There's consequences for being disobedient to your parents. Today, it's like we want to be our children's friend instead of being their parent. And so now, listen to me. The first place the will for socialization comes in the home to teach our children how to act and function in a society, yes, so we can keep them out of jail. It was once said, if I train them in the high chair, I keep them out of the electric chair. All right. Amen. We don't want to do that today. We want we want to be our, our kids' friends. We have we on their Facebook page, we Instagram and them, and we're trying to be just like them. But but no, the Bible tells us we have to train up a child in the way that they should go. In other words, if your child has a certain a certain direction God is taking them in, it is up to a parent to identify that and then help them to groom them into what God wants them to be. But if a child doesn't want to listen, uh -huh. If a child doesn't listen, it's up to the parent to discipline them. It's not up to the school. Please don't leave it up to the cops. But you need to learn how to discipline your child because your child is what's going to be a reflection of you. What's going on in the home. We try to keep this thing real. Okay? Keep it real. Because, because yeah. children today, it seems as though they want to do they, they want to do what they want to do. And then we have grown folks still living. Oh, about to mess up. Grown folks still living in your house. Don't want to pay no bills, and yet they want they, they, they want everything that, that affords them the uh, as if they have uh, free access to your home and they can do whatever they want. But yet, when you want them to do something like pay a bill, they're gonna tell you why I gotta pay. <laughs> and my name, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm the child. Hey, come on now, I'm the child. When you're 40 years old, you need to get up and get out. I'm just saying the truth, okay? Amen. When we get to a certain place where we 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 don't we don't obey the word. Yeah. We cease to reflect the face of God on this earth and in our community. Right. People need to see Jesus functioning within a family unit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because they, because this world's crazy right now. Yeah. All right. And notice I'm going to hand this over to Nikki. Um, it says, and fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. As I sat there and, and looked at him, I said, how come it doesn't say mothers? Mm. Fathers, you already told the man to be the head of the household. Mm. So, 
And there are fathers out there that I'm not going to say they've given up on their kids, mm -hmm. but they have stopped being fathers to their children because it's difficult. And so here you see God asking fathers to not anger their children, but instead bring them up instruction in God's house. And, 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 and men, even some Christian men, have gotten to a point where they say, well, I don't want to deal with her, so I'm not going to deal with my child. What if God had told you he didn't want to deal with you, so he gave up on you? As a father, it is your duty not to give up on your child, no matter how difficult it is, because God is pledging to you right here, asking you, don't do it. Pastor, there's someone out there listening mm -hmm. that might not be in church. But I want to let the, the believers know how important it is to be that example. Mm -hmm. For kids to obey, you must be saying something of, a, of value. Yeah, that's good. Something that means something. And those men or women out there, mothers or children out there, they need something to pattern after. So the life that we live will speak to them and give them something to the pattern after. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that hope. Because they don't know Christ. They don't know what Christ looks like. But they're supposed to see the Christ in us based on the instruction that we've been given in the book of Ephesians. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you don't have to be so wordy. Just live the life that God wants you. Live life. Be loving. Mm. Be considerate. Be compassionate. Compassionate. But watch this. Be present. Yes, sir. Amen. There, there so is. So many That's times when you're not mm -hmm. present. And, and I say that for myself. There's times when you're so distant from your children as if, you know, they're not important. But I, but I found when I was raising my kids, I was right there trying to take them to football practice, whatever practice you want to be. Right. But, but I found out that wasn't even enough. Yeah. Because we get so caught up in church. We come to church so much, you forget that. Wow. They need our presence in our home. They need our presence. So being there, being in the moment, yeah. being there when you have... You know, talking to them for real and sitting down, looking in the eye and saying, hey, well, how was your day? Yeah. You know, yeah. and be there for them yeah. and say, you know what? Right now, I know I have this to do, but you, I need to be with you right now. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, okay. I had thought while you were talking. I don't know if I said it thought first and if I would forget the next one. Go ahead. But <laughs> <laughs> he pointed out fathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't exasperate don't frustrate, don't anger your children. When fathers, when you lie, when you don't show up, when you strung out on drugs, when you beat mama, when you cheat no mama, when you do those things, you, even if you're present, let alone if you're not present, you damage your children. You hurt their mind, you hurt their spirit, and you cannot undo what they saw. And then now you gotta fix that on top of being current with dad, Clean up what's messed up. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you. If Paul had to say that all the stuff he wants to say after this was right, that God led him to say, and say, fathers, there will be some cases that you're not going to be with mom. Yep. You might not, maybe it didn't work Amen. out. Yes. Or mom, you know, passed away. Whatever the situation is, where there's several moms. Right. And I'm saying it nicely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those children are still your obligation. That's right. Because they're still going to feel like you're my father, especially if they know who you are. Yes. Right. And expect you to be the father. And if you don't know how, Paul was the dad. Mm -hmm. But knew, uh, we have a great example of a father mm -hmm. and a son. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. And that's the ideal family that any parent will want. Mm -hmm. amen. Any amen. child will want. Amen. amen. That's awesome. Amen. And... and I, I've got to move, but this is really good. Yeah. Because um, I, I really appreciate what you just said because so many times we forget how we affect our children by the things we do in their presence. It, it's upsetting to me when, we, when I see folk drinking in front of their children. They don't know that this is something that can get them in trouble down the road. We have to set a better example That's right. by living an, an example uh, uh, so they know what to do. Yeah. You know, it, it, oftentimes you tell the kids, do like I tell you, do what I say. But kids don't do what you they do. What you do. Oh, wow. They do what you do. They see you doing it. They don't do it. That's it. Well, well, you, now, let's be our move. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to get this deep. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you were going to get this deep now. We have all this stuff to talk about. All right? 
this, this, this go through uh, verse 5 real quick. Go through <laughs> verse 5, and I got to move my own. Serving. Uh, so come on now. This is, this, this is like, okay. Now, this passage this, of Scripture, this, awesome, this, yeah, this passage of Scripture right here, got had a lot of us, I'm talking about us, I'm talking about us, the black folk, who didn't want to get involved and who did not want to hear the word of God because it was used back in the day to keep slaves in position, keep their foot, keep the foot of the master on their neck. And that's never been the, that's never what God meant in this text. So today when we modernize it, we're talking about a boss or supervisor and employee, the relationship we should have in the workplace. Yeah. Again, this goes back to submission. Yeah. All right, goes back to submission. Bring yourself up on someone's authority. Bond service, verse 5, obey your earthly uh, masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as as would as you would Christ. Here we go again. Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as yeah. bond service of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, yeah. knowing that okay. whatever good anyone does, this will receive back, this he will receive back from the Lord. In other words, there's a payday coming yeah. if I do it the way God said. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, whether he is a bondservant or free, masters, do the same to them yeah. and stop your threatening, knowing that the one, that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. In other words, your supervisor yeah. Has a, has a, a supervisor too. The master has a master. That means yeah. God uh -huh. was master over both. Oh. And so therefore he expected each one to, to respond to each one in the proper way. And he says that, and, and that God shows no partiality. Now, Jesus. we want to talk about that a little bit? Anybody? Yes. I don't know if it's going to sound cheesy, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know who the quote is from, but it used to say, how I treat you says more about me Amen. than you. Right. So I was gonna flip it and make it say this. How I how I feel wait, I can't even do it that. But in my sentence, the way you treat people should always reflect Christ. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. You want the others that you have to do yeah. to you. That's what he said. That's what he said. Go ahead. I, I just love how God demonstrated his love towards us while we were in the middle of the mess. Amen. This is a perfect example because even, now we're talking about the second on my job. I've been there for 31 years. Praise be to God. Because it didn't start out in me being obedient to those who was in authority over me. But because God knew who he had selected and the work hadn't been finished in me, I became the one through the word of God, learning how to respect those in authority. Yeah. And he, he always took me to that. If you be obedient to those, when you go into your mom or daddy's house, mm -hmm. they tell you to take off your shoes, you better take off your shoes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know why? Because it's their house. It's their house. And as an employer, employee, I'm an employee and working for an employer, that's their house. That's right. There's some rules that come along when you're in somebody else's house. That's right. And when you learn to respect somebody else's house, there's favor to come right, come when you be obedient uh -huh. to that. There's that consequence again. There's a good consequence uh -huh. that the blessings do come when you learn to respect, not as I serve it, a man pleaser, yeah. but right. when you do it as you're doing unto God. Like, you know what? This man in authority, if I was in his shoes, I would want somebody to listen to me. Amen. I don't understand why he's making a decision. I might not agree with this decision. As long as it ain't hurting or causing any damage to right. anybody. Right, right. You still. And by being obedient, there is a blessing that comes with being obedient. Amen. Amen. Let me say this real quick. You do not have to work for an employer that's going to violate you. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. See, because when you look at this passage of scripture, he's talking about we all have responsibility to each other. And, and if you're an employer, you have to treat your employees the way God wants you to treat them. With the respect they deserve. With honor. And with care, because then you 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 want them to reflect your company. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and then as an employee, I can't tell the boss, well, I'm supposed to be at work at seven o'clock. And I'm so up at seven fifteen. I'm so up at seven thirty. You can't keep doing it. You know what they're about? You don't want to be on the unemployment line. Come on. 
and you can't turn around and get mad because they they, they fired you because you, you're not you're not following their rules. Or like you said, their house is their house, so you gotta follow their rules. Amen. But there's a blessing in us responding to employers as God will have. Because remember, we're working as unto the Lord. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So if you have a crazy boss, you're working as unto the Lord. Remember, you're on a mission. The mission you are assigned. To, 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 to follow God and represent Christ in no matter condition or position you're in. Right. So now when they when your employer, let's give you an example. I had people who on my job prior to this job and this one where um, there was things that were said, it really worked my nerves, and I wanted to choke somebody, I wanted to smack him. I, no, I, I, no, I, I, I was about to go out like this. You know, uh, cranked up, you know what I'm saying? But I held my peace. I said, Lord, help me because I'm about ready to go off in here. And then there was individuals who were racist, individuals who just did crazy stuff. But when time came, they hit they hit a wall. Talk, man. Trouble. Oh, man. Guess who they came to? I need you to pray for me. I need you. My son's going through. Can you? This kind of thing will happen because you decided I'm serving God, not a man pleaser. I'm not trying to. It's not about the check right now. It's about my about me bringing glory to God Amen. where I am. Amen. And watch the change that take place. Amen. All right. Can, can ahead, ahead. Okay. So everything that you said, and, and the more and more you elaborate, made me think about verse number seven: serve hard. Wholeheartedly, Wholeheartedly as if you were serving Amen. the Lord. Amen. If we, if literally you went to your job and looked at it, we're not just going to work, I'm serving. I'm serving. And serving. hypothetically, how would I treat my boss if I looked at him like, uh, God said I need to respect him, I need to deal even with my clients, or even with the people I serve throughout the day as if I'm serving the Lord. We would treat people so much yeah, differently we if we constantly thought that when we were at work, in mind, your gifts will make room for you, and uh, with a good name is better than a whole bunch of things, it will follow you. God never asks Bless you to do something without protection, protection or blessings or some benefit. It's always, always. so he always. can get the glory out of you, and guess what? You'll get some then, but you will get some now just by being obedient. Amen. I, I think, too, also that God teaches us humility in some of these situations. Yes, Lord. Um, you know, there's been some very difficult times. I've been on my job for 20 years. Um, and some of the most experiences where I thought I was above, God had to take me down a couple notches. So, you know, when we do find these difficulties at work, we always want to play the blame game. Oh, no. You know, it, my boss said this to me, or she so-and-so not pulling her weight and so-and-so not doing this. Sometimes God needs to teach you humility oh, so that those that need to know him yeah. can actually come to you. Because if we're all puffed up, oh, why would they ever want to know, come to us to see what's so different about us? Right. So sometimes God has to knock us down. And in that process, when we're humbled, mm -hmm. the employer becomes humble. Amen. 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 I'm going to say this and we're going to move on. But the Lord just dropped this in my spirit because I, I've been guilty of this. Stop complaining. Stop complaining about this job. Stop complaining about this situation. Stop complaining about the people. Stop complaining these people ain't no good. They all crazy. Who's running the joint? Somebody, a monkey running this place? I don't know who's running. It, 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 because God hears all this. Yes. I'm, I'm ready to smack my own self. God hears this. And, and, and we have to remember that, again, it's not about the person who's named as supervisor. It's not about the person who's named who signed the check. It's about the fact that God provided you opportunity. Provided. Yeah. I provided you yeah. opportunity to glorify him in that place. Some you cases, you may be the only book, only Bible they'll read. Because the Bible says we are living epistles. Written that all men might be able to read us. If they don't, if they're not picking up a Bible, they're not coming to church, they're not near a person who's saved, they're near you. Come on. And if you're a Christian, that's how we're supposed to respond. We're supposed to respond in such a way that they be able to see Christ in us. And I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, because I know some folk can work your nerves. But if you know you're going to a job that where people are crazy, be prayed up before you get there. Yeah. Be prayed up before you get there. No, you know, Amen. Know that you're going. Know you're going to come up against some stuff. And and the next area we're going in, it's funny because God laid this thing out. He went from the house yep. with dealing with the wife, the husband, and spouse, and then dealing with the children. He goes into the to the job, yep. 
Now he's talking about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Uh, spiritual uh, warfare. Isn't it funny that God would say that after he had told us about these other things? Maybe because in spiritual warfare is where we face spiritual warfare more so in our homes, uh -huh. on the job, and between our kids. Yeah. So we need to know how to spiritually Amen. fight in order to be able to survive. Let's look, at, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, 17. So I read that. We have about 10 minutes. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, when <laughs> the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, oh, stand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Go and read about the entire. Stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. Let's talk about this. You don't have a lot of time to get into this. But Lord knows, I hope we inspire you to pick this Bible up for yourself. Please, yeah. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Do not go to bed tonight without reading your word and, and, and ask God for some clarity. So, so let's, let's look at this. He said, put on the full arm of God. In other words, be strapped. Uh, be be prepared. Be yeah. ready. Come on now. Because, exactly, because, the, listen, you are in a fight. We are in a, in a battle. Every single day of our lives, we may not see our enemy, but oftentimes we think it's the person. That's why he talked about the house, he talked about the, the job. We think it's them. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, Amen. Yes. We wrestle against principal powers and, 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 and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So somebody talk to me here, though, because I'm, I'm talking too much. Don't talk to me. Okay. There are days that I physically had to let myself see myself put it on just so that my mind and everything could actually feel power of God coming out. I've actually had to look at exactly what it's supposed to do so that something to help me grasp, you know, the reality of what is going on and how we are ready to fight because it's going to be on. It's going to be on. It's going to be on, but you have to put it on. Sometimes it just, it, some, some days it's hard. It just don't feel like it's in you. It don't feel like it's coming. Sometimes you just feel like it's just a little too much. And, and there are times when you have got to remember to put it on if you didn't put it on. I, I love how if you take a look at this thing and the Lord help me. Each thing that he that God instructs us, that Paul instructed us to put on is protecting a pivotal part of us. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. If you put on the helmet of salvation, God protect our mind. Mm, come on. Because we know spiritual warfare will start in your mind like nobody's business. Right. If we if we put on the shoes of peace mm -hmm. order our steps. Amen. Amen. Because that path is narrow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But when we delight ourselves in Christ, our steps are already ordered. So we need those shoes of peace to make sure we know which way to go and which way not to go. When we put on the belt of truth to buckle it around our waist, that truth comes from discernment. You get that feeling in your gut to know what's right or wrong. And when you have truth of the word of Christ inside of you, your gut will let you know. Mm -hmm. And so when I when I look at this, the shield, the breastplate of righteousness, check your heart. <laughs> Protect your heart because out of it the mouth speaks. That's right. That's right. That's right. I just want to say to somebody out there listening, spiritual warfare is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paul said it clear. When I go to do good, <laughs> evil is present. Right. When I want to make some changes in my life from where I've been living wrong or rhythm wrong and I'm trying to do right, that's when the spiritual warfare begins. Mm -hmm. The enemy mm -hmm. already had you, but now that you're stepping over to that light, over to Christ, mm -hmm. that's when the battle begins. So be a good chair. Yeah. John 16, 33 yeah. says, In this life, you're going to have tribulation and trouble. But be of good cheer because Christ has already overcome. And Paul is helping us out with this. Tell him to put on some things to protect yourself. 
Amen. And the word of God, you can equip yourself for this battle. Amen. I don't have much time. I practice with you. Thank you so much, so, so much. much. So, so, so hopefully yeah, next, yeah, next yeah, week, yeah, yeah. Hopefully next week we can jump right back on this. Past. I'm sorry I didn't tell you Pastor Duncan has so much to do, that's why he's not here tonight. But um did, we need to know when we're being attacked. Ah, that's good. How 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 can I identify? Right. One, one, if you're confused, confusion, mm -hmm. the enemy functions in confusion mm -hmm. and deceit. He's always trying to distract you from the things of God. Yeah. He's trying to move you from the things of God. So before you can move you from the things of God, I must first confuse you. He's Functions in chaos. When you look at the uh, Genesis chapter one, tells you tells the whole thing. When you talk, when God says He showed up and the earth was out form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, that means the earth was in a chaotic state. And what did God do with chaos? He spoke, Come on, man. let there yes, be, sir. and became. He spoke, he spoke order. He spoke life into the situation. And what he's saying, when Jesus was in the wilderness, the enemy was trying to cause confusion and chaos and distraction. What did Jesus do? Jesus used the word of God. He said, he said, he said, and he said, and it is written. That's what he said, it is written. Every time the devil tried to come at him, he said, it is written. So that's the only way we can fight these spiritual battles. You must have an understanding of the word of God. Because the devil is not playing games. The spiritual warfare is real. If you're still, you walk around with this, uh, 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 depressed, constantly stressed out, and it seems like you just can't get yourself together, you are in a spiritual battle. And let me also say this before we close, because I got the five minute thing going. <laughs> Amen. Um, before before we leave here, it stops talking so much to the devil right. and about the devil. Mm. Put your emphasis on your health rather than on your weaknesses. Put your emphasis on your God, on your Savior, rather than on what the devil's doing. So many times we act like the devil's more powerful than our God, but it's not true. He is not on the same level. He is not on the same playing field. He's not on the same in the same weight class. He's a lightweight featherweight compared to our superweight God. So you have to know this, that, that, that God is able to subdue the devil at any moment. You have to take authority. You have to take, but anybody got a last word? Got about 30 seconds. I, I, I just want to, since you're touching on it, and I really hope we go back to this. Um, you, you said, you know, spiritual warfare. There may be someone out there right now that is struggling with depression. Mm -hmm. There may be someone out there that is struggling with anxiety. I'm pretty sure each one of us can identify with being in that place at one point in time. But when you hold on to the word of God, and even though you might not be able to feel God, he promises to never leave you nor forsake you. So no matter what the struggle is, I just want to encourage you to hold on. Amen. Oh, um, I keep hearing and saying, stand. God will allow you to get to a point where you just can't stand the foolishness no more. He'll cause you to raise up a standard so that you will be able not to just fall or give up or lay, lay out and just cry unless you lay in prostrate, you know, blessing God, but that ability to get in that fighting stance of stand because Paul had to say it again and again and again. So I would encourage you, get up, get up, stand, gird yourself, put it all on and fight. Fight back. Guard your mind. The enemy is coming and attacking your mind. It starts there. He places that thought in you, and then he run from there. But you learn how to guard your mind first. Amen. Amen. That can be the beginning of your freedom. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I think we're just about done. We got about another 30 seconds or so. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to be obedient. But we had a great time up here. This Thanks, man. 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 I hope and pray that you guys have something out of this tonight. We labor to do our best to make sure that you get something out of this. We are all, we're all fighting the battle. Yes. Better believe it. We're all fighting the battle of some sort. We all deal with flesh issues. But we know who gives us the victory. Amen. That's why we're still here. Yes. Nobody but Jesus gives us the victory. And you can have victory over your life as long as you put your 
Put your faith in the God who beat the devil at the cross. There is no spiritual forces that can stand against a true believer because the Bible tells us it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. He said, greater is in you than he is in the world. So he just want to encourage you yes. to do as Sister Kima said, stand. You already won some ground. Don't give it up now. Stand. So God bless you. God bless hope to see you next you. week. We love you. We enjoyed you. We hope that you come back and see us again. God bless. Amen.